The Big South Fork is one of the last great wild places east of the Mississippi. Encompassing 125,000 acres of the Cumberland Plateau, this area boasts miles of scenic gorges and sandstone bluffs. It is a geological and historical wonderland filled with stunning river gorges carved by eons of erosion and awe-inspiring rock shelters and sandstone arches. Remnants of Paleo-Indians living in the canyon walls and supporting themselves by hunting and gathering can be found in these forests. Settlers later moved in, trying to scrape out a living from the poor, rocky soil, and names such as Difficulty Creek serve as testament to the rugged life on these mountains. As late as the Civil War era, cartographers were still labeling this area as, quote, the wilderness. This massive gorge is also famous for a certain Scottish-American naturalist, known as the father of national parks, who left his home in Indiana on a 1,000-mile journey to the Gulf, embarking on, in his words, the wildest, leafiest, and least trodden way I could find. These Cumberland Mountains, in fact, were the first ones he had seen in his life, noting that at the time it was, quote, the most heavenly place I ever entered. The notable geological and cultural history of this place drove me out into this wilderness to embark on the 49.3 mile through hike of the John Muir Trail. I awoke long before dawn on January the 13th and drove two and a half hours south to the northern terminus of the John Muir Trail, parking my truck just outside Pickett State Forest along Tennessee Highway 154. I would then begin my trek east, following Rock Creek until I reconvened with the Sheltoe Trace, which would then take me up to the top of the ridge where I would see notable vistas such as No Business Overlook and the famous John Muir Overlook. I would camp just north of Maud's Crack on the ridge above No Business Creek approximately 19 miles later. It was a frigid morning. These first miles near Pickett were hard to follow, the trail bed almost invisible at times, and I would soon discover another challenge. Well, that didn't take long. I'm not even a, a mile in yet. And I already have this growing concern about the water level on this trip. Let me just give you an example. So here's where the bridge was. There's where the bridge is now. So if I'm going to do this trip, there is going to be a lot of water crossings in terrain like that. See how it goes. Am I supposed to go through there? That is scary. It seemed as if the trail was trying to frighten me, especially when I discovered the tunnel that I had to spelunk through. It felt like an abyss the shadows bouncing off the rock walls like mysterious creatures waiting to pounce. Needless to say, I didn't stay long.
The snow draped along Rock Creek was majestic, leaving me in a trance and startled to cross paths with another backpacker. We forded Rock Creek again before parting to continue our own solo adventures. Up, up, up we go. Light was just beginning to peek through the forest canopy when I merged onto the Sheltoe Trace, which felt like being with an old friend. Despite the temperature and the early challenges, I was all smiles from the beauty around me. Massey Falls was a mighty little torrent of water, spraying a winter mist off the rocks as I passed by. By the time I reached Divide Road, the snowy creek valleys gave way to sunny ridge tops with a dry leaf litter along the trail bed. The sunshine was a welcome respite from the cold. My echoing yells were all the sounds I could utter at these overlooks. The beauty was silencing. I was about 18 miles in for the day and fighting daylight when I reached Betty Branch. There was a welcoming campsite right beside the water and the bridge with a fire pit. However, the thought of a wet tent the next morning did not enthrall me, so I filtered what water I needed for the night and then began to climb up the next ridge to chase the remaining sunlight and drier ground.
As I climbed, I realized that the ridge close to Maud's crack was way steeper than I imagined. Not wanting to continue past 20 miles for the day, I found a small patch of flat ground along the saddle right off the trail and began to set up home for the night. I would soon encounter another challenge. So update, should have done a test stake in because didn't realize that just underneath this bed of leaves and organic matter is solid sandstone. Can't get the tent pitch, the woes of a tension tent. We're gonna do option two up on that little berm. Well, I had planned to film me setting up a camp, but seeing as I've walked over 18 miles today in a very short amount of time and decided to pitch camp less than ideal spot, you can see that this is at an angle. Here is my home for the night. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a fire or not, but man, I'm just ready to crawl in there and go to sleep. Tonight's menu is Nong Shim Fancy Ramen, the red spicy kind with Thai chili tuna. And for dessert, we have some Reese's and some cheddar cheese for a little side. Can't forget the Doritos too. I wound up calling this place the little campsite that could. It provided everything I needed and then some. A view of the sunset over the horizon, and enough dry timber to start a fire. Those flames were a welcome friend that night, and I would need that companionship for what would come early the next morning. I was startled awake by the sound of a screaming coyote less than 20 feet from my tent. Its companions responded to each bark and call down at the valley floor. I stopped breathing and remained frozen in place inside my sleeping bag in hopes that it would not come any closer. It continued screaming for several minutes before rejoining its pack. I was petrified. After the dramatic events of the previous night, I was eager to leave my temporary home the next morning and continue onward down the mountain. I knew it was going to be a good day from the sunshine already glowing on the rocks above me and the path below me. On day two, I would travel approximately 16 miles where I would reach the shores of the Big South Fork before climbing up to the top of the gorge again and walking the ridge line for several miles, seeing some of the best vistas yet before ending the day at Angel Falls Overlook and camping near Harvey Branch. There is a thick frozen film all along the creek bottoms, for which I was thankful to have slept higher and drier, even with the coyotes.
After successfully crossing Station Camp Creek, the climb back up to the main John Muir Trail was rather strenuous with several hundred feet and many switchbacks to get to the top. I shed many layers and developed a good sweat as the day finally started to warm up. I was becoming increasingly excited as I neared the top. This was a portion of the Big South Fork I had never laid eyes on before, and I would soon be surprised by the majesty that my eyes would behold. One of the best views I've ever seen. After using the available sunlight to dry out my gear, I packed up again and worked my way around the bend in the river, inching closer to two viewpoints just as grand, Falls Branch and Angel Falls Overlooks. Memorials like this make it hard to believe that people established a livelihood on the tops of these rugged bluffs. A harsh wind greeted me at Angel Falls Overlook.
This is Angel Falls Overlook, one of the highest points in the Big South Fork. Wind up here is crazy, 25 mile an hour winds. The ferocity of this river was undeniable. I was humbled and ready to get to camp. Just to the left of this beech tree is where Nick and I camped on the very first night of our Sheltoe Trace through hike this past summer. Floods of memories are coming back. Love you, trail bro. I camped just above that nostalgic site, with an unbelievable view of Angel Falls in the distance. The roar of the water was a soothing backdrop to the evening. In vain, I sawed up wood, thinking I would have a grand fire on my last night. I think the kindling on the river bank was too wet. I wound up sitting in the dark to eat my dinner before crawling to bed. Tonight on the menu we have chicken broccoli pasta with fajita chicken and some of that cheddar cheese inside and Cheetos. Could not get a fire going. I don't know whether all this wood is waterlogged or what, but tried and tried and tried, but guess we're eating in the dark. It rained for most of the night. Good morning. It is day three. I have 16 and a half miles to reach the southern terminus of the John Muir Trail. Been thinking, and I think I'd like to call this trip a successful failure because definitely going to get done today and through hike the entirety of the trail like I had set out to, but just goes to show that there's always something to learn and you're going to make mistakes on trail whether it's making the decision not to take off shoes and socks and thinking I could ford a creek over very loose stems and plunging my entire legs shin up full of water soaking everything socks liners boots to not testing out the ground before I put in a stake to not hanging my bathtub floor or my tent high enough and let rainwater in so I don't think it deterred my trip, but it's just one of those things. It's like, man, there's always something to learn. As an experienced backpacker as I am, I'm still going to make mistakes. So, anyway, it's got a nice river view, which is awesome. Let's see what today holds. It was a dreary morning. The previous night's rain had made the rocky trail slick as ice in spots, and the water level was moving faster than anticipated as I approached Leatherwood Ford.
I'm just going to pretend that I'm not seeing all these great great campsites just a mile away versus the one that caused me to get all muddy and soaked. Just going to keep walking. The trail seemed to be gracious to me after the many miles of toil because the clouds soon parted and the sun started to shine. I felt as if my path to the finish was being anointed in some way. The roar of the water drowned all surrounding noise away as I approached O and W Bridge. The strength of those rapids felt like they would swallow me whole. The climb out of o w Valley was by far the most brutal of the entire trip, gaining almost 600 feet in less than two miles. I was rewarded though by a stunning view of Jake's Falls along the way. The stunning river cliffs gave way to more rhododendron and supreme rock shelters as I entered the Honey Creek Loop section. I was immersed in a cathedral of rock and moss and gushing water. Time and space felt suspended here as I became disoriented by the maze around me.
I was greeted on these final miles by the first Sheltoe Trace section hikers of the new hiking season. They all seemed eager and excited for the weekend. I wondered how weary I must have looked to them as I passed by. The clear fork and its surrounding rock shelters were my final companions to Burnt Mill Bridge. It was a scenic and pleasant walk to the end. Physically and emotionally spent, I was on the verge of tears from elation and pain as I reached the terminus. I am even more thankful I got to soak in the accomplishment on the top of Burnt Mill Bridge because it was washed away by record-setting flooding of the river later that spring. Hey, thank you for joining me on this through hike of the 49.3 mile John Muir Trail. What a wild, crazy, exciting, fun, gritty, dirty, nasty, challenging adventure this was. If you want to get your butt kicked in the best possible way, come on down to the Big South Fork. It'll really put you through the test. Hey, if you support this content, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Hit that like button, send me a comment. I love talking to you all about the trail. And until next time, get outside, folks. It'll do you some good. The caravan has arrived! Woo! Hello, Mr. Boone. How's your travels been? <laughs> Hard and <laughs> long. Glad you could make it. Me too being in a lot deeper spot it could have been a lot a yeah. lot of things could have been worse it's a on the other side of that. Oh! I'll just meet you on the other side. Alright. Now I 
am I going to get back over? I don't got my walking stick. That was not worth it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, that was not a good choice, but I didn't have a choice in the matter. Oh.